Oh, okay, well, it's, uh, you know, bright and early Sunday morning, and, uh, uh, I shouldn't say bright and early, it's daylight savings time, so, uh, took the, took the blade off, I got some, I know I got some brush I need to push around my building site, or home place here, but it's not gonna get done right now, I've, I've, uh, they're talking rain coming tonight. Um, we got the fertilizer machine back, done up by Eagle, you know, about 25 miles away last night. So uh, uh, before the rain comes, I got plenty of other people wanting me to fertilize, but I said, tough luck. I'm gonna spend the day in my bottom up in Bellevue. And uh, so I got a disc up there. Gonna take the field cultivator up unhook it hook onto the disc go and disc all the wet spots unhook the disc well i'll probably go take the disc over to a buddy of mine because his broke and uh let him disc a bunch and then but anyways and then then hook this up and just spend the day trying to get the whole bottom ready and or at least the wettest part of the bottom what flooded the worst and uh yeah so we're going to service this really quick um, not hooking up all the hydraulics, only the one to unfold it so I can check the tear, air pressure, grease it, um, just make sure that it'll at least make the trip up there. All right, this morning, this week, made it up here. Uh, just unhooked my field cultivator over there, hooking up the disc. So what I always do, I shut the tractor off, work these levers over here just a couple times. That relieves all the pressure. Uh, if it's when you're hooking and unhooking hydraulics on these older tractors, uh, unhooks it releases the pressure from the hydraulic boxes, makes it much easier to hook it up. So, see what I can get done. All right, we got it all greased. I got a tire that's low. I threw in this little 12 volt air compressor and rather than trying to bring an air bubble up here. So I think that'll work, at least get enough in there to, especially since that's on the main wing. Got it all greased, except I need to lower it and take the pressure off this center beam so I can get some grease cert in like that grease cert and the one over here. Uh, and then I found I got a dust cap missing. So use the handyman secret weapon duct tape and we're gonna tape that up. Well, it's slowly getting there. At least we got something in it. So, uh, all right, so now I'm setting my depth. So my bush hog, this was here so that it I could release the pressure, keep it raised. I always go to the second notch. Uh, I meant to bring, my dad had an old bush hog many, many, many years ago when he first started and he had a little, uh, he took like an old washer or, or a bearing race put in here. Kind of, so you could go, you know, like a, uh, you know, one and a half, you know, and I meant to bring that up, but it's dry enough now. The ground is so dry, it shouldn't be a problem. When it was wet, this was almost too much and I was getting a lot of mud uh, causing me problems, but so, okay, well, I don't think that pressure gauge is too accurate, but at least we get some pressure in here. Helps, helps the stress, because I do have to go help a buddy on his place that's uh, a few miles down the road. Man, it's windy, but so, you know, you just improvise. Uh, since I didn't have a little spacer, it's wet soil here. It's uh, going in a little deeper than I want, and then it, this cheaper disc, I should have bought one over the winter. Then I get this where that stops turning. So, see if that helps. Well, it's working pretty good now. Uh, once I got out of all this wet stuff that was up here, uh, get into this drier stuff, and heck, the old disc is working good. So, you know, this is, this is just as uh, not, no tillers like me this is sacrilege but we got to do it there's so much weed residue and uh it's so rough and you know all i'm doing last time i just did going this way in spring or fall there's summer 
video out there about that in the summer when I was just the weeds out here at night. So now I'm going the opposite direction, just trying to cut up as much of this residue as I can. Hopefully then I can get through with my field cultivator. Hey there, well, it's too wet to put on anhydrous, so I'm going to put on some spread to dry uh, uh, fertilizer, potash, phosphate, or phosphate, anyways, uh, sorry, trying to drive, got the old Model A to pull, put this on since it's just here at my home place, so try and get a little video of that for you. Good old 1952 Model A. Uh, one of the last ones made. Dual fuel. Had the split pedestal front end until my buddy stole it when he bought the tractor for a few years and then we bought it back from him. So, uh, yeah, see how this goes. Alright, so, got to throw this lever and turn on the PTO. Alright, when that only turns on, when the clutch is engaged, it's not live power. All right, now, ah, we changed the uh, rope. In fact, I'm gonna move it over here so it doesn't get, ah, I can leave it over here. I've got this rope trip, and so you pull it back so far there, and then it latches, if you can see that. And then get it to unlatch, you just give it a good yank and it unlatches. So there, it's latched. So now when I start turning, there's an apron inside there you probably can't see that's going to start pulling the product out of the back. Which, and then this will be spinning when I have the, when I'm moving, when the clutch is engaged. And then this moves at the speed of that tire. Uh, you know, it's got a high and a low gearing, but it's on low speed. And then we adjust, we go through here and we adjust how many pounds we're wanting to put on. And here's our measurement gauge. We get that to measure with what we want over here. And slowly this will start to get pulled out, drop on the spreader, 60 foot, 60 foot spread. And uh, it's a little muddy, but we'll get her done. It's working good. Sure made it top. Made the old Mont Blanc Park falling up the hill, but uh, that'll get better here.
gonna have to talk to my trapper about this. He missed somebody. I had something like that probably about 15, 20 years ago. Knocked the front end out of my tractor. I had several of them over here. There's one. Oh man, here's another one. A little shit. Well, this sucks. The uh, first I got done with my 10 acre patch and I had a bolt on the gearbox that I had to replace that uh, quit, uh, broke again. So I don't, I don't know what's going on there. I drilled it out and this time I kind of drove a roll pin up in there. We'll, we'll see if it holds. But then every once in a while I've been hearing kind of a squealing from the tractor and I couldn't ever figure out what it was. Well, now all of a sudden the uh, generator is just locked up solid. So I'm not that far from the shed up there. I might just drive it up there. I mean, the belt's not a big deal. If it does fry the belt, you know, I can get a new one of those. So, uh, you know, it's supposed to snow and rain tonight. I was sure hoping to get this fertilizer spread, but looking like that's not gonna happen. I was just idling it up here. It smoked it pretty good. I should have just cut the belt. I'm going to probably just do that anyways. I'll go get a new one. Ah, oh, yuck. Okay. I cut the belt. Oh, 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 excuse me. These old generators, you know, they got a spot right here and here. You're supposed to uh, lubricate those bearings. Well... Who knows when that's been done. I know it was done a few years ago, but again, that's a few years ago and it's been sitting here. So I'm gonna see if I can get this thing freed up, put some, uh, maybe some penetrating oil in there to begin with and, and go from there. <laughs> 